Hello, in this mind map, you will see an overview of hemodynamic disorders. And before we start, let's have a look at a blood vessel with red blood cells, white blood cells, some platelets, and of course some plasma. Let's look at the major events that can affect this. So one of the things that can happen is the extravasation of fluid. Uh, this is without the cells, just fluid to the extravascular space. And of course, this is known as edema. Another possibility is when the entire constituents of blood or whole blood leaks out to the extravascular space, and this, of course, is known as hemorrhage. In addition to edema and hemorrhage, there can also be abnormalities with blood flow, and if we think about it, if uh, there is too much flow that is coming into the vessels, this is an active process, and this is known as hyperemia. And conversely, we can have less blood leaving the vessels than usual, and this is known as congestion, and this is a passive event. Other things that can happen would include um, obstruction of blood flow. So there's actually really very few sort of uh, reactions to injury in blood vessels. There can be leakage of fluid, there can be bleeding, there can be obstruction. And an example of this would be because of a thrombus. And the thrombus is defined as an intravascular mass which is formed from the components of blood during life. So the danger of a thrombus is that it can occlude the blood vessel and therefore it can affect uh, whichever organ or tissue is being supplied by this blood vessel. Another possibility is that the thrombus can actually break off uh, either entirely or in parts and this can travel within the bloodstream to a blood vessel at a distant site and this is called embolization. So another thing that can go wrong with blood vessels would be when the wall of the vessel is damaged and as a result of this there can be dilatation and weakening of the blood vessel wall and this is known as an aneurysm when there is dilatation of the vessel wall. It could be due to injury such as atherosclerosis or in conditions like hypertension. And the danger in aneurysms is because of this thinning of the vessel wall and weakening, it may actually rupture, giving rise to hemorrhage. So having a visual guide of what can go wrong with blood vessels, now let's look at some of the major hemodynamic disorders. And we're going to look at abnormalities of flow first, so hyperemia. As mentioned earlier, this can be an active process or a passive process. In active hyperemia, there is actually too much blood inflow to a particular location. And we can see this in acute inflammation and blushing and also in exercise, where there is often flushing of the skin and that is due to hyperemia. Uh, when there is passive hyperemia, this is known as congestion. And this is because there is reduced outflow of blood from that particular location. And we can see this in conditions like congestive cardiac failure, and we can also see this in venous occlusion. Now, another process we talked about earlier is edema, and this is when there is excess extravascular accumulation of fluid. So take note that this is not whole blood with the cellular constituents, but fluid. And therefore, this fluid, uh, when it collects in the extravascular space, it can give rise to interstitial swelling, or the fluid can actually collect in body cavities. So this gives rise to body cavity effusions. And there are two main types of effusions. They can be exudates or they can be transudates. They are due to different causes and also have different protein levels. So exudates are due to increased vascular permeability. And this is an active process often, and we can see this, for example, in acute inflammation. As opposed to this, transudates are usually due to increased hydrostatic pressure in the vascular system. So for example, again, in congestive cardiac failure or in venous occlusion, and the pressure builds up within the vascular system and therefore fluid is forced out. 
And there is also the opposite side of it, where there is decreased plasma oncotic pressure. And this is usually due to a reduction in plasma proteins. So certain conditions would predispose to this. For example, if there is chronic liver failure or chronic liver disease, where there is reduced albumin production. And also when there is renal failure, where there is too much excessive excretion of proteins. So there are several actual uh, measurements that the biochemistry lab can perform on this fluid to decide whether it's an exudate or transudate. For example, the protein concentration or level would actually be higher in exudates because of increased permeability. And as compared to this, it would be lower in transudates. And also the specific gravity along the same lines would also be greater in exudates compared to transudates. So just a very quick recap, we have here a little diagram of a blood vessel and we have looked at edema, which is when there is fluid extravasation into the extravascular space. And we've also looked at abnormalities of flow in terms of active hyperemia and passive congestion. In the next mind map, we will look at other major hemodynamic disorders, namely thrombosis, hemorrhage and shock.